Good morning and welcome back to the Kristen Amdahl Show. This is episode 1132 and we are here live in Southwest Florida with our special guest today. Baby Bjorn has decided to grace us with his presence. How exciting is that? Let's see who's here. Hold on. I think I touched one of my lenses as I was putting my glasses on. Doesn't help to see. <laughs> Hi, Carol and Val. Good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hopefully you got a chance to watch the live premiere of the tutorial video with me uh, at, what was it, 9.30 this morning? And now at 10 a.m., we're doing our Shawls for Sharing episode where we're going to be talking about the shawl that we did the tutorial video for this morning. I broke the this uh, quarter shawl pattern into two videos because uh, because of the construction, to be honest with you, the shawl begins at that top edge with the triangle motifs. So you have plenty of time to do all five of your triangles right now uh, before doing the, the square video next week. And I also thought that today would be a good day to dive deeper into something I said at the end of the tutorial video. Oh, that little face, that little face. Oh, oh. Hi, Lori. Hi, Judy. Hi, Judy K, Judy W. Hi, Joe. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. Oh, I can't read this person's name, but hello. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so if you're not familiar, Tuesdays we dedicate the Kristen Amdahl Show to Shawls for Sharing, my charity, where I design a new shawl pattern every quarter, and the proceeds from that said pattern get donated to charity to help survivors of domestic violence. I alternate between a knit pattern and a crochet pattern every quarter, and then every Tuesday I dedicate the show to being a make-along, whether it's crochet along or knit along for the shawl, and talk about different ways to... Um, uh, I got distracted, sorry. Talk about different ways to modify the pattern or different things you can take from the pattern, what have you. Hi, Lewis. Hi, Chris. Hi, Judy G and Marsha. Sharon, Miss Muffet. Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Glad you all could be here. So hopefully you got a chance to... Hi, Kat and Leona. Hopefully you got a chance to watch that tutorial video this morning with me in the live premiere. But if you didn't, that's okay. It's not always a live premiere. It can, once it's done being live, it's then a recorded video. So you can go back and watch it as often as you need. It's a six row pattern. So go back and watch it with whatever row you're working on. It follows along with the pattern. So when you're reading the pattern and viewing the chart, you can follow along with the video. And I promise you, it will help you learn to read patterns better because the way I speak when I'm doing the video tutorial is in the same way as the pattern is written. So if you're somebody that's new to patterns and maybe intimidated by written patterns, this is a great opportunity for you to get to, uh, <laughs> to maybe I should move. Is Bjorn taking up too much of the screen? Yeah, we're going to set up the, this um, screen here. It's nice to see our little uh, furry friend here, isn't it? Uh, hi, Irma. Good morning. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Jeannie. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you. Okay, so one of the things I touched on at the end of the last video was that if you're doing this in a different gauge, you might need a different number of triangles for that top row of the shawl. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I sat here and did the math for you and you could write down notes in case you decide to make these mo motifs a different size. I probably should open up my pattern so I can see the exact numbers to give you a better, um, some better math help. Right? Right. Where is it? Here we go, we'll open this one. Is this gonna be a good place for the sign? Yeah, I think it'll be a good place for it. All right, so let's go back and see how big, each of these motifs, and again, I used Aran weight, which is just slightly thicker than worsted weight. It's still considered a number four yarn. I used that weight yarn 
and a K hook to make these motifs. So they're 10 inch squares, 10 inch motifs. That's really large. Now, there's pluses and minuses to everything, right? What's the pluses to making really large motifs? You don't have that many to make and it goes pretty quickly, right? So these 10 inch squares end up making the shawl surprisingly quick project for something that's so large. But let's say you wanted to make this in a thinner weight yarn, which would then use a smaller crochet hook, and then what? It would give you smaller motifs, right? And if you're making smaller motifs, if you want the same size shawl, let's go over what the size of this shawl is. It's 76 inches wide by 38 inches tall, which is a, a shawl on the larger size as well. So the other beauty is that you can also adjust the size of the shawl you want to make too. Let's say you want to make it shorter. Let's say you want to make it less wide. You can determine that based on the size of your motifs and how many you join together. So what do you say? So instead of doing 10 inch, what if, what if we do the math for a five inch motif? Okay. Let's see. I know my pens were out here. Don't tell me. Yes, I thought they were right here. So want to talk about a five inch motif, maybe, maybe something you do in sport weight yarn. We'll do this for a couple of sizes too, because I don't mind doing it. And if anybody has specific questions about doing this, please let me know. Uh, again, and we can talk about color work too. We talked a little bit about changing colors in the motifs last week. We can bring that back up too. This one, I use uh, some of the Malaga color pack worsted weight yarn in uh, by Hobie Yarns. And this one, I use the Mega Ball Aran yarn in color cornflower. I believe Judy has shared a link to that here. Okay, so let's say your motifs, what'd we say, five inches wide? So five inches wide, if you want a shawl that's 60 inches wide, 60 divided by five is 12, so you would need 12 triangles along the top, okay? I may not even draw this specifically. I'm gonna draw like a likening, a likening to the shawl. Here, let me look at it myself so I can make this a little straighter. Drawing backwards is just not the great. Here, I'm gonna start all over. <laughs> make it look nice. But I can read the comments if you have comments while I'm doing it. And I'll turn this around as soon as I get these triangles drawn. It's gonna make sense in a minute. Bear with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, notice how these overall shawl triangle triangles are around the same size. Yet, notice this one takes a lot more motifs, and this one takes a lot less. That's because of the size of the motifs. So, if these are, let's see, this works out perfectly as well. So, these are. There's twice as many here as there are here. The top edge starts with six motifs. This top edge starts with three motifs. Does that make sense now? Can you see that? Can you see the difference, the, or the similarities and the differences here that because the motifs change size, you use more or less of them to get the same exact size of the shawl? Is Malaga softer than Mega? Um, maybe a little bit. They're both relatively soft. They aren't the squeaky, crunchy acrylic yarn that you may have tried before. There are some really budget acrylic yarns out there that squeak when you use them and they're very scratchy. Uh, neither of these are like that. They call these premium, uh, premium acrylic yarns and I do like them better than you know, the budget friendly stuff you get at a big box store. This is the uh, Mega Ball and this is the Malaga, Malaga Color Pack. I've blocked both of these and washed them and they're both soft. I would say this one's a little softer. Now, 
if you're comparing it to a natural fiber, no, it's still acrylic. It's not going to feel like alpaca. It's not going to feel like cashmere. It's not going to feel like bamboo or cotton. But of the acrylic world, I think these are both really nice acrylic yarns. They're soft. They're not too stiff. Uh, now, I always make a point to use a looser gauge when I'm doing uh, a budget-friendly yarn just to give it a little more drape anyway. But um, yeah, I think they're they're worth, I think they're worth the price. I think they're great for things that you want to be durable or you want to be budget, fr budget friendly. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. But great question, and I'm happy to share my opinion. Uh, you know, you may decide that something else is better or worse. Uh, I'm working on something else for... Um, Hobie yarns right now that I can't tell you about till next week. Uh, but this Friends cotton that they sell is also super budget friendly and it comes in different weights. This happens to be the DK weight, but it comes in worsted weight, DK, sport, and fingering. Let me find a link for that for you because if you're looking for something softer with more uh, drape, these would be, these are great. Here's the Hobie Yarns Friends Cotton 8.6. I'll send you a link to that one. And then from there, it'll suggest the other weights too. Amazing color combinations. And I, I'm not I'm not allowed to show you till next week, but I'll show you. I bought, I got three color packs of that yarn and holy moly, they're beautiful. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to this. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Thank you for sharing the link. Okay. So would anybody like me to go deeper into gauge on this? I want to see if anybody has specific questions about using a thinner yarn or a thicker yarn in a different gauge, different size of motifs to, uh, to make this shawl a different size. Yeah, I agree, Chris, and I think that online retailers are getting a lot more convenient with uh, rewards and with free shipping options like i don't blame them for charging you shipping on one or two balls but when you place a large enough order like on knit picks or on hobie yarns you can qualify for free shipping and that's a no-brainer and if the website is a decent website with great photos both of those websites i think are actually great shopping websites i have had pure success on both websites whether it's from color accuracy and their photography uh, description accuracy and what they say about their yarns hobie yarns i especially like the way they mix and match their colors whoever mixes and matches their colors gets my stamp of approval for being a color aficionado uh, i think they do a great job of it Kind of like, like this, the, that color pack we did for the Cerisa Poncho, and then I used some of the extra to do these motifs for the Tranquil Tiles shawl. Like that's whoever put this color pack together did a great job. So if you are somebody that doesn't feel confident about picking colors yourself or gets overwhelmed looking at 50 color options on a page, it does get overwhelming. And if you don't have a specific color palette in mind, say you're not saying, I want to make something that reminds me of Alaska or Morocco or my favorite team colors or pastel rainbow or whatever, whatever, if you don't, a beach theme, if you don't already have something like that in mind, picking one of these color packs is amazing. And they do this in lots of their yarns. Oh, you want to see another sneak peek? This is something that I am not holding back because of Hobie Yarns. This is something I'm working on with their yarn, but working on it independently. This is that their uh, fingering weight, fingering weight Egyptian cotton, but one of the color packs. I didn't pick these colors out. They did it for me. And I'm making a long duster vest out of this. But amazing colors, right? Amazing. And we're getting close to finishing it. I don't have the pieces sewn together, but notice how I've used my locking stitch markers as uh, little pins to hold it together. Uh, it's a great way for me to get something put together to make sure I like the size, make sure I like the way it's working out before I commit to doing the actual sewing. But anyway, again, another, another example of where Hobie Yarns has done an amazing job picking the colors for you. I can, I've got a link to that one too. Oh, I don't like seeing my belly when I stand up here. <laughs> All right, let's see. I know I have another link for that. 
And that yarn, holy moly, is that soft. That's their Baby Cotton Organic Color Pack. And they pick the color. It was hard to choose one color pack. I went with the, the dusty blues and the turquoises and the white. But goodness, goodness. Um, how gorgeous, right? I'll tell you which color pack. I chose color pack one. But color pack two is like dusty roses. Then color pack three, like mauve roses. Color pack three is a pink to white. Color four is another like terracotta kind of rosy pink to white. Then there's a brighter turquoise to white. Um, and then more of a beachy one that goes from white to silver and then different shades of dusty blue. And then there's six other packs beyond that. But lots of really interesting color combinations. So if And you can order any of their yarns singularly too, which is great. You can pick the, you can do all in one color or pick your own colors, but especially when shopping online. Although, do some of you feel like when you're overwhelmed by putting colors together yourself or intimidated putting colors together yourself, I think you can get just as overwhelmed in a yarn store as you can online as well, don't you think? You're either in the mood to pick colors yourself or you're not. And especially when you go into a five color combo and a 10 color combo, I do think it gets a little more complicated. Picking two colors is pretty easy. And even picking three colors is pretty easy. But I think when you go into the higher number of color combinations, it can, if you're looking for random, easy. Then you're talking just stash busters, stay within a color family or don't, and that's fine. But when you really want to put together a look I think unless you have you know a photo to go by you know when I've done photos in the past where I've pulled the prominent colors from a photo to show you how you could pick a palette from a photo whether it's nature inspired or geography inspired or travel inspired I think that makes it a little easier but to just go into it fresh and willy-nilly <laughs> I love that expression I know it's silly but um, it's get it's just a lot harder and so don't don't beat yourself up over it. It happens to all of us, including me, and it does get overwhelming. Um, so like I was saying, either go into it with a plan or look at color packs that have been put together already. I hate the word yarn snob too, Tammy. I've always hated the word. Uh, it's been in the industry for as long as I've been in the industry, which is over 18 years now, and I've always corrected people when they've asked me. I've said, nope, there's a yarn for, there's a reason for every yarn, and there's a, uh, there's a, a yarn for every reason, whether it's to be something budget friendly or to be something that's easy to take care of or whatever. I think that there's a time and a place for everything, and that goes with just life in general, and it can apply to yarn and patterns and techniques as well. Time and a place for everything, and that makes me the opposite of a yarn snob. Do I like high quality things? Of course I do. What, do I like Angora and uh, alpaca and cashmere and all those yummy things? Do I like bamboo and Egypt, uh, Egyptian cotton and organic cotton? Of course, I love all of those things too. But uh, I hate the concept of being a snob about anything. It's just not the way I believe about life in general. And I don't like the term. Anybody else that likes to use it, use it in good health. It's no big deal. It doesn't bother me at all. But I personally do not like it. Okay. Hi, Crazed Vintage Model. Ah, Chris is on the same page. <laughs> oh, okay. Free's Vintage Mall, all I can say is free is free, you know, um, of course free isn't going to be the most, uh, you know, the most premium shipping, but you know, you always have choices whether you want to pay for something and pay for the best quality of something or the fastest of something, or if you're getting free, uh, I don't have a problem with that at all. Great, Angela did have good customer service with them. That's wonderful. 
Yes, Val, you use what you can afford or you use what makes sense for the gift recipient that you're sending something to. If somebody is uh, a person that you know is not going to hand wash something, you don't give them a gift in a delicate fiber, period. You know, you gotta, you, you gotta think about the use of something too. Are you gonna make a rug out of something super delicate? No. Are you going to make a, a gift for a new mom, something that has to be hand washed for an everyday item? No. Uh, you know, so there's just, there's a time and a place for every, or washcloths, you're going to make washcloths out of something that could felt? No. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a time and a place for everything. And, and thinking about these things, thinking about the atten intention for the yarn before you purchase is usually a really good idea too. Now, are there things that we buy because we just love them? Yes. And that's fine too, because you can still buy something without knowing what it's going to be for, but still have an idea of... A category of what it's going to be for. You're not going to buy a super luxurious cashmere silk blend yarn and say, you know, I could use this for anything from a rug to a dishcloth to a shawl. No, it's probably going to go into your stash based on yarns that you would use for shawls or garments or cowls or something else like that. Yeah, I don't have a, if, if I'm getting free shipping, I realize that the free shipping could be any method that they choose. And that's the, you know, it goes back to that old saying that I've told many, many years ago, good, fast, and cheap, <laughs> right? Pick two, you know, which way do you want? Um, you're never going to get the, the most, yeah, free is free. I, I don't have an issue with them sending me the slowest route. That's, you know, it's a way for them to be able to afford to offer me what I want. And it's it's mutually acceptable, in my opinion. But if it's not, then you should pay for the more expensive shipping. Simple as that. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions? Do you want me to go over any other type of math on this? Do you want to talk about a different weight of yarn on this? Do you want to talk about figuring out yardage on this? Tim... Yes, if I have the opportunity to interview Vanna White again, I will absolutely tell her, Tim, isn't she a sweetheart? I thoroughly, thoroughly loved having the opportunity to interview Vanna White. It was something, uh, it was like a dream come true to me. I've been a super fan of hers since I was a teenager. I remember reading her autobiography when I was a teenager and aspiring model and hearing that she came from a modeling background. Uh, and she's just such a sweet, down-to-earth person. And anytime I can find out that someone's successful or uh, with a huge platform like that, when they choose to take their wealth and their platform and their exposure and do something good with it, I just, I'm so, I admire that so much. And she's raised so much money through Vanna's Choice Yarn for St. Jude's Hospital with Lion Brand. And she's just done so many wonderful things over the years and inspired so many people through her work on Wheel of Fortune. And she's still a sweet, down-to-earth person. I just love her. There you go, Chris. There's another option. Yes, Superwash Merino is great if you're looking for uh, quality and easy care. Uh, some people don't like Superwash. Some people do. It, you know, it's, there's something for everybody and there's something for every, you know, there's a purpose for everything. That's awesome, Chris. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I've always, I've only heard nice things about Vanna White. And she was absolutely lovely to me, too. So, yep, definitely love her. Does anybody have any other questions about gauge for the shawl or size options? Does you want, do you want to talk about making the shawl in different? Yes, you could absolutely, absolutely use number three yarn, Val. So with number three yarn, you're probably going to get a four inch. These could end up being four inch squares or five inch squares instead of 10 inch squares. Even this with the Malaga, you notice these are much smaller than the, than the way the squares turned out here. And that's because I used a different size hook too. I used, this is a little thinner of a number four yarn and I used uh, a, an H hook instead of the K hook. H hook is five millimeter and this I used a K hook which is 6.5 millimeter. So this shawl here is only five triangles across, right? And this one is three across. 
this isn't a full size. I did this as a small sample to show you the color work options. Could you make a sweater with these motifs? Absolutely. And I was going to talk about that on another episode because we're probably running out of time. Each week that I that we talk about the Tranquil Tile Shawl for Shawls for Sharing, we're going to talk about a different component of the pattern and different ways to break it down and reuse it and repurpose it for different ways. Today I wanted to talk about gauge so that you could understand that if you wanted to make the motifs larger, you would need less of them. And if you wanted to make the motif smaller with thinner yarn, smaller hook, you would need more of them to make the same size. So when you go back and watch the tutorial video that I shared this morning, I explained this in the video. And I think it might help to have this discussion now so that you can go back and understand why I was saying what I was saying. I was saying, when you're doing the triangles at the beginning of the shawl, make as many triangles as you need for however wide you want the shawl to be. It does not have to be 76 inches wide like this one. It could be 60, it could be 70, it could be 50. Excuse me, started to have hiccups and they went away. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, <laughs> so depending on what yarn you use, you could make this in any size with any weight yarn. And it starts by figuring out how wide you want it by how many triangles you add at the beginning. After that, you're simply filling in the squares to finish to do the bottom with the squares. And we'll talk about that more next week too. Uh, let's see. Is the photo of the Malaga option in the pattern? No, it is not. Nope, the pattern is written to teach you how to do this in one color. Could you use, I think I saw, could you use uh, a variegated yarn? Absolutely, you could use a variegated yarn in this shawl. Keep in mind, when choosing a variegated yarn, when you, if you're looking for stitch definition and motif definition, you want to stick with tonal colors in a variegated yarn. If you want this to be more about the color of the yarn and less about the texture of the stitches, then high contrast is fine too. And, you know... Variegated yarns are made in a lot of different ways. Sometimes they're short color changes, sometimes they're longer color changes, and uh, you'll, you're gonna have to do a swatch and see if you like it. Some variegated yarns look better with certain projects and some look better with other projects. And even with even doing this in multicolor, because I kept the colors tonal in this, you can still see the stitch pattern fairly well. If it was a little more high contrast, I think you'd see it less. Like there, there's, a, there's a movement to the color here, almost like a self-striping ombre yarn. It gives you more of an ombre look the way that I chose the colors. If you went with rainbow or just some other high contrast combination of colors, you may lose some of the stitch pattern, but that's okay. It depends on what look you're going for. You may want to focus on the yarn color or focus on the pattern of the variegation in the yarn, or you may want to focus on the stitches or on the motifs themselves. You could also do these like we talked about last week. I did a whole diagram on the board on last week's show talking about if you just did the each one in its own solid color and then did uh, multicolor. So that would be similar to this where you only used one color per square, but then changed color for each of the squares. And I talked about a few different ways to combine them in a few different color sequences to give you some ideas on how to mix and match them. Because that can get complicated too, especially if you don't want light colors to touch. And so we went over that quite a bit last week. And if you need a reminder on that, you can go watch last week's Tuesday episode uh, about that. Motifs of various sizes and a cardigan. That would be fun. Definitely something more of a complicated design. Uh, especially if you need to size it as well. But yes, very pretty. Does anybody have any other questions? Yes, absolutely, I'll let you know, Tim. I will let everybody know when I do, if I do another interview with Vanna. I think she gives interviews when she's promoting something new. She was promoting something for Lion Brand that last time. And I think I got on the list with her publicist to be notified when she's offering interviews again. But uh, yeah, I would love to talk to her again. She's so inspiring and so sweet. 
and a fellow kitty lover. She has a kitty that looks a lot like Bjorn. Who's being a good boy today? He's sleepy. It sure is nice when Bjorn joins us though, isn't it? All right, I will hang out here for another minute and see if there's any more questions. I think we went over a lot today. I hope I gave you some ideas for different ways to change up the yarn if you want to. And also to make how many stitches should I cast on for a simple hat with a number six yarn? That is a great question, Bobby. And you know what? There's still more information that you need to know from that. What size is the hat that you're making? What is your gauge? Uh, to make a hat, you need to know the circumference of the head that you want to fit and your gauge. So let's say you want to make a 20 inch hat, which would be a standard adult hat, and you want and you knew that your gauge was two stitches to the inch. With a number six yarn, your gauge might be somewhere around two stitches to the inch. So 20 inches times two stitches to the inch would be 40 stitches but that's assuming you want to make a 20 inch hat and your gauge is two stitches to the inch yeah so generally speaking when i use a number six yarn i'm using uh, anywhere between an eight millimeter to a 10 millimeter set of knitting needles and my nightingale hat is an example of this gauge i believe and to do a 20 inch hat at two stitches to the inch would be a cast on of 40 stitches. But if you're making a 16 inch hat for a child or a smaller hat for a baby or making a man's hat upwards of 24 inch circumference, depends on what size hat you're making as to how many stitches to cast on as well. But I, I think that this math might explain it well enough to you that you could decide on how big you want to make. You, know, you want to measure the head with a, if you're doing it for yourself, you would want to measure your head with a tape measure around the widest part, which would include your ears, right? So you want to make sure that you're measuring with your ears included so that it's going to fit the, your whole head and keep your ears warm. And then whatever number that is, it could be 19 inches, could be 23 inches, any somewhere in that range. Uh, and then multiply that by your gauge. If you just want to go with my, my, um, you know, it's not my eyeball. What was I supposed to say? My general gauge assumption or my ge general gauge estimator, I know that I'm going to probably get somewhere around two stitches to the inch when I'm using that size yarn. So uh, yeah, yeah, just rough math. That's what I was trying to say. I was thinking spitball, eyeball. I'm like, nope, I'm not there. <laughs> Yeah, the rough math of it. So anyway, for when I'm thinking rough math, I'm thinking worsted weight's going to be somewhere around four stitches to the inch, and number six, uh, number four is worsted weight. Number six is super bulky. I'm usually going to get somewhere around two stitches to the inch there. So that's why... Um... Oh, Lori, I'm glad you think I'm making it sound simple. It isn't that hard. It isn't that hard. You can make a hat without a pattern, absolutely, by just knowing simple math. The size of the hat, the size of the circumference of the hat, and the gauge of your yard. That's it. Okay. I don't know if Kelly Rippa is into crafting. Have to find that out. Um, one person that I would love to interview someday who is into crafting is Julia Roberts. I know she's been a knitter and crocheter over the years, and I'm just a super fan of hers. <laughs> I'm not a super fan, but I am a fan. All right. I don't see any other questions, but great questions today, guys. These were all great questions. Yes, Judy, thank you for sharing those links. You can share your shawls for sharing updates in the forums, the 100% private forums on my website, and you can share your photos of your completed shawls for me to share on the website as well. Judy has shared a link to both places where you can submit your finished photos and also where you can join the forums. You have to have an account. It's free. You have to be logged in, which means everyone else has to be logged into their account to see what you're writing. It is 100% private. Not like Facebook. It's 100% private and 100% moderated by not me, my crew, and everyone else to keep it nice and safe and clean. Yay! That's why we're here instead of on Facebook. 
uh hi joe or joe thank you yes if you like this content please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and you like coming here and hanging out with me and our wonderful community here please consider subscribing and if you want to be notified every time something new comes out or i go live you can click that bell button next to the subscribe button and get pop-up notifications when i'm doing something new thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me Thank you to our sweet guest who decided to grace us with his presence. Thank you, baby Bjorn. Such a sleepy kitty today. I hope you enjoyed all the tutorial stuff, all of the tips for doing different things with this pattern. I hope you enjoyed chatting with me and everyone else. And once again, thank you so much for the questions. You make the show so much more special by asking me questions and giving me the chance to answer your questions live. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.